Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for less nobles next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Edelgard from Fire Emblem Three Houses, the final house leader, and as I discovered while live tweeting my playthrough, a lot of people's favorite house leader. I think it's because of how cool her armor is. Fashion is really important to some people, and while Dimitri is fashionable and Claude is even fasher, I think we can all agree, Edelgard is definitely the fascist. You all should know, I am not about to go easy on you today. Calm down, it's dodgeball. As long as we can pull off the win, doesn't matter how. It's dodgeball. Our victory must be absolute, no matter what it may take. It's dodgeball, calm down. Was that a normal intro? Haha, <laughs> good times. Okay, everyone, I like Edelgard. I think she's a good villain, but I definitely think she's a villain. It's okay to like villains. I like a bunch of villains. Loki, the Onceler, Simba. I also don't think she's the only villain in the game and probably not the main one. But when your second in command is Hubert, I have no idea why there are animal bones under my bed, Von Vestra. That's a red flag. Also, there are literal red flags. The golden deer have a golden flag, the blue lions have a blue flag, but the black eagles have a red flag with an eagle on it. That's not really subtle imagery. So yeah, I'm gonna make jokes about her being evil, and if you can't handle that, come back next week. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to get heavy, and I ain't talking backstory. I mean, also backstory, but mostly really thick armor. Next, we need to be an authoritarian. I mean, having a bunch of authority. High charisma, of course. Finally, we'll get a little bit of healing every once in a while. If you're gonna be ripped apart by weird evil church officials for your whole childhood, you might as well get some benefits from that. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Rule for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Strength will be number one. If you want to be the emperor, you gotta dress like the emperor. That means hard iron shoulder pads. Constitution next. Generally, you don't take hits, but even if you do, you take them pretty well. Charisma after that, you're a pretty great leader and a terrifying adversary. Follow it up with intelligence. We've got to know all the history of Fodlin if you're going to storm through it like an anime bulldozer. Wisdom is a bit low. Impulse control, not really your thing, and we'll dump dexterity. Stealth also isn't an Edelgard thing. There are several times someone's like, should we be sneaky and try to bamboozle the enemy? But Eddie's like, no, I need more blood on my boots. Edelgard is a human, but a marked human. Her marks are, I hit harder sometimes, and I get healed when I hit stuff sometimes. There isn't a dragon mark for either of those, we'll just go for custom lineage. That'll let us grab the heavy armor master feat, reducing incoming damage by 3 from non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, and increasing your strength by 1. Bump it to 18 with your 2 free points to smack things really, really hard at level 1. Take deception for your skill of choice so you can keep your secret identity a secret. I'm trying to keep it a secret for people who haven't played the game. Can you imagine if someone spoiled the fact that she was by its aunt the whole time. Noble works for your background, giving you persuasion and history proficiency. Even if your goal is eliminating the concept of nobility, you still get the perks. By perks, I do mean being tortured during your childhood. We'll kick things off as a fighter, letting you grab two skills from the fighter list. Like athletics and intimidation, those two kind of go hand in hand. Wearing enough steel to wrap a tank is scary, and you probably get more time on a bow flex if you don't stop talking about crushing your enemies. For your fighting style, I'm going to go with Defense for plus one AC when you're wearing armor. Great weapon fighting wouldn't really work. You tend to one-hand stuff. That means versatile weapons like a battle axe or a warhammer rather than a great axe or a maul. But you'll still have a pretty great axe. And when you hit the point where you can wear full plate, you'll have 21 AC with a shield. That's also pretty great. You also get Second Wind, letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest. As far as crests go, this one's pretty hot. It's honestly fire, not a crunchy or puffy crest this is a flaming hot crest it's really awkward to try and do this without spoilers second level fighters get action surge letting you make two actions in one turn once for a short rest and you don't even need a dancer let's say hypothetically you made flame a dancer out of habit it wouldn't be an issue for you only an absolute fool would do that but you're not a fool when you pick the third level of fighter for battle master a martial archetype that's perfect for a master of strategy the strategy of never taking damage you get four superiority die which are a bunch of d8s that you can use on maneuvers like repost to hit a 
creature that misses you with a melee attack as a reaction, adding your superiority die to the damage. I like to warp Eddie to the middle of the fray and watch everyone bounce off of her like a living landmine. Parry is a good alternative if the damage gets through, letting you reduce damage by the superiority die plus your dexterity modifier, which is a negative one, so that's not actually great, but it could make you even more beefy. Distracting Strike lets you give your next ally to attack the target advantage and you add your superiority die to the damage. More importantly though, you get to take advantage of Ferdy's A rank. Turns out all those times you fought really brought you closer together. Of course, you also get Student of War, giving you a proficiency with a set of artisan's tools, and you know I love calligraphy. The painter's supplies is more in character. Edelgard hates the church. Obviously, she'd reject the power of a god. Oh, hey, speaking of, you know how Edelgard has a special affinity for reason? Well, guess what? Neither of her special classes actually use it, so we're not using it either. She'll have good charisma, ready for you to hop over to Sorcerer, Bard, Warlock, or Paladin, whenever you want to. Holy heck, though, she's like the anti-Paladin. There's mage slayer i wish there was priest slayer back over to the build now fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement you should use yours to cap off your strength modifier we won't be grabbing great weapon master here since you don't use heavy weapons if you one hand them all fifth level fighters get to push the damage higher and higher thanks to extra attack letting you attack twice with your action or up to four times with an action surge you're pretty brave i could see you doing that it's a reference to brave axes. Sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement. Grab the skill expert feat, giving you plus one to your charisma since that's the ability score I want to increase. You get expertise in skills like intimidation to double your proficiency bonus instead of just the normal proficiency bonus. And you get another skill like performance. You need to teach your brother to dance. Then you can teach him how to dance of death and murder him. Seventh level battle masters get to know their enemy, letting you know a creature's HP, AC, strength, dexterity, or constitution score, total level, or fighter level, and whether you're better, worse, or equal to them. Rhea thought you were studying axes, but you were really studying her. You get two pieces of information for every minute of study, so you should have a whole kit after the semester is up. You also get another superiority die you can use on two maneuvers, and I think it's about time we make people respect your authorita. Commander Strike lets one of your allies make an opportunity attack and add your superiority die to the damage. I'm sure Caspar really wants to hit stuff. Give him the opportunity and the support bonus. Rally lets an ally get temporary HP with your charisma modifier plus your superiority die. Think of it as a little defensive support. Eighth level fighters get another ability score improvement or a feat. The fighting initiate feat gives you another fighting style. Dueling adds two to the damage of your weapon attacks as long as you're not dual wielding. Wearing a shield doesn't stop this, so it's actually pretty good to put on a tankier build to keep the damage up. Ninth level fighters get indomitable, letting you reroll a failed saving throw once per long rest. As a heavy armor lady, your number one fear should be magic, but this will make that a little less stressful. Not really, your dexterity is still garbage, you're gonna take damage from fireballs, but you could use it on the death save to not die. Tenth level battle masters get improved combat superiority pumping all your superiority die up to a d10 and you get two more maneuvers since you're handy with a hand axe let's grab the quick toss option letting you throw a thrown weapon as a bonus action and add your superiority die to the damage helping you deal some damage when your movement holds you just out of enemy reach wasn't an issue for me i loaded her up with movement bonuses but that's just a me thing speaking of movement evasive footwork lets you add your superiority die to your ac as you're moving so opportunity attacks aren't something you need to worry about those aren't in fire emblem but now they also aren't in dnd 5e 11th level fighters get another extra attack letting you make three attacks instead of two with your action or six attacks with an action surge and heck you can even get seven out with a quick toss just because you trample people doesn't mean you shouldn't be fast actually being fast would probably help with the trampling 12th level fighters get another ability score improvement or a feat let's grab the tough feat since we're not using any spells so concentration isn't really a thing tough gives you two hp for every level you have and every level you get remember hit points aren't meat points so you could chalk this up to your skills with a shield as well as having a shield 13th level fighters get indomitable but again maybe the teacher is turning back time to save your life again oh hey for the people who think i hate edelgard that's not true she's not even my least favorite black eagle that's byleth old mannequin byleth maybe that means i really hate myself this is too much introspection. 14th level fighters get another ability score improvement, bump your constitution for more HP so your rule will never end, or at least it won't end before it begins. 15th level battle masters are relentless, which is the one word I would use to describe Edelgard, meaning that you always have a superiority die when you roll initiative, so make sure that you're using those counters. That's really where most of your damage is coming from. You even get another superiority die so you have no excuses. Spend it on more maneuvers like tactical assessment. To add your superiority die to an investigation, history, or in insight check or commanding presence to add it to your intimidation performance or persuasion check your intimidation can get absolutely bonkers with this and expertise but probably use your superiority die for repost 
Speaking of, 16th level fighters get another ability score improvement or a feat. The Martial Adept feat lets you pick two more maneuvers. Goading Attack lets you force a wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they have disadvantage to attack creatures that aren't you, which should bait them to come at you for a big riposte after they bounce off your shield. Menacing Attack forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they're frightened of you until the end of your next turn, making them even worse at fighting you than they already were. You also get another superiority die. That's the real reason we took the feat for a total of seven. 17th level fighters get a second use of action surge and a third use of indomitable doubling up your rounds of swinging the axe like a gush darn lumberjack and giving you one more opportunity to stand tall while being attacked from all sides 18th level battle masters have their superiority die bumped up to a d12 imagine trying to attack someone but instead you miss and take a d8 plus a d12 plus seven pathetic but i guess that's what you get for signing up for the blue lions 19th level fighters get our last ability score improvement bump your constitution up even higher i don't want to use parry i'd rather use those superiority die for counters that's a risky strategy or it would be if you weren't a human panzer shrek our capstone is the 20th level of fighter for one last extra attack that's four attacks every round eight attacks with an action surge nine attacks with a quick toss that's a very brave axe now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, your rule will last a long time with over 200 HP and 21 AC with a shield. Every time someone misses you, you also get to punish them with a massive repost. Well, seven times a day at least. Finally, you deal nice and consistent damage with four attacks per round, meaning four D8 plus 28 with every attack action. For weaknesses, hopefully your DM gives you a magical weapon during the time skip because none of your damage is magical, which could make some demonic beasts a little harder to take down. You're also not gonna be great at hitting flying Pose, but don't worry really nobody is good at hitting claude finally if you're fighting a dragon it would be good to have more dexterity fire breath and aoe attacks are going to be very hard to avoid with the heaviest armor in all of fodlin so it's a good thing hubert will literally never leave you alone have him handle the casters and the flyers then trample everything on the ground building a new empire is like building a team so figure out your role fill your role and use your authority to get people to fill the rest just make sure that you're not hanging on to your most dear friends or you could be feeling blue i'm not lying Dimitri. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Two Lock and Mango for more Two Lock fun.